Hello, I'm Michael. I'm Justin. We're Bear on the Keyboard, and this is A Bar Rant. Rant. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Not much, man. <laughs> some weird... <laughs> yeah, we got some weird energy we got, right we now. We got some weird energy right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of extended eye contact right before the, we did the intro there. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing wrong with that. I like weird energy. Oh. We got to bring that to the table. We are weird energy. Yeah. We're just like two burning balls of gas billions and billions of miles away. Stars? Weird. That's weird energy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're just plasma elementals, eldritch plasma elementals. Like, star- I, saw, I saw a star get described as that once, and I was like, that's very funny. I that's, like that. I, yeah, it is fun. I, yeah. I do like that. But it also is weird energy because, I mean, look, look, obviously, that's why astrology is real and works. Astronomy. Whatever. <laughs> Because one's real and works, and one's like somebody types up some shit into a newspaper or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. That's why astrological signs matter to astronomy, which is real and works. I mean, it is real. Astrology, in that there's signs we're born under due to the location of them in the night sky. I mean, yeah, that part is accurate and real. I mean, astronomy is real because astronomy it's, is one hundred percent real. It's a thing that exists. It's a study. Oh, I, I mean, all these things are real in that sense. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, other than that, um, we're not real. Ah, we're zero sum of existence. I don't. I don't exist. I'm. I'm not real. I'm, not I'm gonna put real. like a fade effect, like a dissolve <laughs> effect on the screen for that. Um, <laughs> Remember, future me, when you edit this. Maybe that's... Edit. I don't do jack shit to these. Fuck no. <laughs> fucking, Why would you? I put a little intro sequence and, like, that's it. <laughs> that's all it needs. Yeah. Um, maybe that's what I should do, though, is uh, to, uh, become an astronomer. <laughs> yeah. Start start writing up horoscopes for a- people. Astrologer. Astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> Astrocoly. <laughs> a Socrates or whatever. Uh, I saw it. I'm just... I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be a... Uh, I'm just gonna go out there and write theories. On on that note, <laughs> Justin, you're looking for new means of employment. I am at the moment, that so is a hence, fact. great segue, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. And, and we're not talking about this either. This we we're not paid enough for this to be considered employment. No, 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 no. It's, we'd like this to be employment. Obviously, it's not. So yeah, here we are. Uh, but yeah, I am, and uh, there's a lot of places hiring. Like that, that's where like the job market is is trash. It's not the job market's not trash. Yeah, there are places hiring, all sorts of places hiring. Um, what's trash is pay. Yeah, and this, this makes sense. People don't want to work for an amount of money that's not a living wage. But also, you know, you, you, you got to get income. I don't know how people manage to not work and still get money and get by. Yeah, that's... Kinda... I can't figure out how to do it. Yeah, if I, I could figure that out, I think like, I'd be a lot happier. I haven't looked into, like, how to do that and, and, and do this thing. Mm-hmm. Um Because I'm, I'm just looking for a job. Like, right. I'm like, just, I'll just get a job. And that will take care of me having income. Uh... I don't understand. I just don't understand how people do it. They're like, yeah, I don't have a job. And I'm like, how do you, how are you out with money to do anything right now? Yeah. If you don't have a job and you don't have an, in, a steady income. Right. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't get that. Uh, and so do you, you encounter people on the reg? Who are just like I do encounter. I know they're I, at the bar having a drink or something. I they're know like, people they don't, that like, are I don't at have the a bar. job right now. They, they, yeah, that have haven't had a job for a while, and I'm like, is, is it savings? Is it like what? What is it? Is it like, unemployment? Like, is it some some sort of getting? You get a welfare check that I for what? <laughs> yeah, some sort of fucking benefits package maybe. I don't know because I, yeah. I, I know there's a lot of people who get out of work because of like union shit, right? I mean, there's yeah, there's like the, like oh, I was a you know I was a commercial truck driver or something like that, like, and then I, I got laid off, and so now I'm on fucking furlough or whatever, and they're, I'm, they're I'm also, making money from that. They're also seasonal jobs, yeah, where people. Uh, make some, a fuck ton in a very short time span, and then they just make it last for the rest of the year. Yeah, there's also uh, 
they work for a company and when they get laid off from that company until work comes back up again uh they got unemployment to collect like i understand those things there's some people that it's like hmm, it's like well, why don't you get a job like they don't pay enough and this is fine and i'm like what is this though Where yeah is this what is this from? where do yeah. i get this golden ticket yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Like, yeah, I also I, I also agree they don't pay enough. <laughs> I would and I don't want to do them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you, like they they don't want to pay, and there are places trying to pay more and give more uh, in that aspect. But even competitive wages kind of places, yeah, is that we're talking about. But even with that, it's still not enough for a living wage, which makes it really hard. Because I honestly, no one's making a living wage. No, man. When fucking, I mean, I think I'm paid pretty damn well when 40% of my income goes to fucking rent every month. Ah, like, that's insane. That's too much money. And this is, and this isn't, and this place is like grandfathered in at a pretty cheap fucking price compared to some of the other shit around town. Oh, yeah. I just did my ballot quick sidestep uh, for voting and I had sure. to vote no on a thing because, like, before I even read about it, someone asked me, like, oh, you, you going to do this? And I straight up was like, no, because it's going to raise. Um, property tax. I'm not paying property tax, but property tax goes up. That means cost of living is going to go up. Yeah, because somebody's got to pay that. Cost of living already costs too much. Yeah. So no. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, I vote no on anything that has like that has like a yes no option for a law. I vote no. I stri I like to strike down all laws. Uh, and that's because I don't believe that there should be any more of them. We have too many already. I'm tired of this shit. So I literally will just vote no on everything. I like that. Like, I, li I don't want I like, that. I like that stance. I don't want more rules. I'm like, like I don't want anarchy I mean, either. I'm this, not that kind of person. Uh, yeah, I know. But I'm like, we have enough. We don't need more bullshit. I mean, and this thing like isn't even a law. It's to help out something. But it's like, you, like anything that costs more money. I, I'm like I we already pay too much money like it it shouldn't be a thing yeah there should be enough funds to take care of that already in that so yeah how about just because, taxing us more the public servants air quotes takes a fucking pay cut <laughs> they take a pay cut and then also they learn how to actually um, uh, budget appropriately yeah. no shit on that too so fucking a dude uh, of that and anyhow, um, but yeah, I mean, it's things like that though that makes it difficult. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, by by next week, I will have a job. Mm -hmm. I'm looking. I'm trying to be a little selective and competitive um, for what I'm going to get. But I can only. You're 39 years old. You've been in the job market for what over 20 years. Oh yeah. So then, yeah, you you should be. You have the right to be a little selective and competitive uh, yeah. when it comes to that kind but of stuff. But also, I I can only go so far. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not going to like sit around. Um. But I I would like to get something a little bit more than even what I was just making at my last job yeah. would be nice. Pretty good at selling myself. I think I can do it. It's hard to find. It really is, uh, but there are plenty of jobs out there, which is why I know if I can't get what I would like to have, I can still get a job. Yeah. And people being like, well, there's nowhere to work. When people are like, oh, there's no, nowhere it's hiring. It's like, the fuck there isn't. I mean, you can go through our town. There are now hiring signs and accepting application signs fucking everywhere. Yeah. A lot of them are in the food industry. Sure. Because um, it's a fast-growing, competitive, fast-paced industry, and also it's uh, hard to keep. It's got a huge turnover. Well, because it's fast-paced and fast-growing, and, yeah. <laughs> and all the all those exact reasons I just said again, yeah. Uh, but even still, it's like you fucking go do that. Like if you, if you're going to complain about there not being work, you're not willing to work. Is how I look at it. Because and this isn't us being boomers saying nobody wants to work anymore. We don't, but <laughs> because like that's to, not a fucking option. Well, I, I'd like to point out, obviously, we're not boomers, but obviously. also I, I'd like I'd like to say like um, I don't think Gen Z has this mindset. I I work with. I think all of this is fucking manufactured by the media. Yeah, like, like legitimately. Like, yeah, like Gen Z does not have that mindset. I know a lot of Gen Zers that are very hardworking Gen Zers. I know some that want to work, um, that don't have work. 
and we'll just go get a job. We like, work with Gen Zers that have like two jobs right, exactly. or are going to school and working full time like, too. I, I mean, like they're like, busting that's, their ass. Like this yeah. is a it's it's a bullshit mindset that's like, out there. We make fun of you guys a lot. We make fun of Zoomers a lot, but like I, you guys, like you're a prime demographic. But we make fun of Zoomers a lot. I make fun of the Gen Z. I make fun of millennials. I make fun of boomers. I make fun of everyone. I'm not going to go into everyone else that I make fun of. Because those generations, I think, is uh, easier and encompasses everything. Personally, I think Gen X has pulled like a fucking fast one over over, over all of us. I make fun of Gen X too. Um, they should be made but, fun of more, in my opinion, because they've just like they kind of slipped away. Like everyone talks about boomers and millennials and Zoomers, but nobody really talks about Gen X. I'm like, you guys fucking have some onus in whatever and everything that's happening right now too motherfuckers they know yeah <laughs> they're aware they've got so gen x i don't think i think a lot of them aren't that aware i think a lot of them are fucking i mean way up their own ass and they're if not pretentious at least they are out of touch with what is really happening so i i think a lot of gen xers which out of touch a lot of them definitely but that's because they've they are literally like, we we got uh, we got time before the internet, but they got like they're coming off of this this like hella. Uh, they're entering the workforce when the internet was a thing, basically. Yeah, like yeah. they they got into this this like hella mentality of uh of, of, like they're growing up and they're raising um was a, a, a quite a quite a bit different than ours. That is accurate, yeah. Um, I will say my big sister, who we have a 20-year gap, damn near, yeah. is, is wildly different in personality and attitude than I am. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and like you said, like, they're they're going into the workforce as the internet is becoming a thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're, they're like, uh, they are, what, uh, like, Office Space, the movie Office Space, the cubicle thing. Yep. They're the cubicle workers. Yep. And so they understand a shitty job trying to get by making enough money to be able to pay for something but then watching as they continue to make that money and then they can't afford something if they lose a job or whatever and they lose their place and then it's like oh so they see all of that market happen and they get that yeah they also have both millennial children and Gen Z children. Mm -hmm. So they see that aspect too. Like, I don't know, Gen, Gen Xers, which is, I think, why they kind of just slipped, slipped under through. the radar there. Yeah, slipped yeah. under the radar because they, it is a weird gap for them in our history, in, in time, and our growth, and how society is was moving. Yeah. And so. That's why they are also a little out of touch. I will say, though, that they seem like they have the same. And this is me kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit. Sure, here. sure. But By all means, Because do so. I don't disagree with any of the statements you just no, made. No, absolutely. Um, as, as far as blanket statements are concerned, I do think that they do understand the struggle. And they are trying to keep up and keep pace with everything that's happening around them, just like we are. And just like the Zoomers are going to have to be rapidly because they're entering the yeah. workforce now. Um, I, I think mean, they're in the workforce. That's what I'm saying. They yeah. are current. Yeah. I mean, but you know how generations work. There's a big gap. Some of them yeah. are fucking 14 and others are like 24 or some shit, you know? It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's just like, you know, we're both millennials. You're 39. I'm 34. Yeah. Uh, shit. I consider Kim a millennial and she's 43. So yeah, it's same kind of, same kind of aspect. She's like right on the cusp. Right on the cusp. Almost a Gen Xer. Almost. But yeah. not quite. Yeah. Um, Gen Xers are mostly born like the 70s, like from the 70s to like the early 80s. If I remember correctly, uh, but yeah, and then millennials. So there's like that overlap where it's so like early eighties to late eighties, early nineties. Like depending on what you look at, some some say it it goes all the way to eighty five, which is bullshit. My my older brother was born in um, eighty two. He's he's a millennial. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I know him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trust us. Tr trust. We, we can tell <laughs> one another. Yeah. Uh, but no. Um, but yeah, it, it varies though. Um, even still, like some will say, like eighty one, eighty seventy nine is the cutoff for that, and I I feel like that's about right, hmm. give or take whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Um, on it. Uh, but yeah, like you, you know, your Gen X, you you is basically just kind of that ten year gap, like. Maybe six, 69, sure. Yeah. 69 to give it that 11 years, but that's it. 
Mm -hmm. There's not much more to it than that. But, yeah, so... I mean, yeah, if you're... I mean, I guess born in the... I think, like, the early 60s, even, you'd still be in that Gen X zone. Because you're not... I mean, boomers are born from 1949 to, like, 1960. I w so... I, I wouldn't say early 60s. Maybe, maybe 65 up. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we're splitting hairs now. I, but, yeah, I know. It's silly. That, that doesn't matter. Silly. So we're, this, we're, we don't decide the gen... Who does? I don't know. Some, exactly. The fucking... <laughs> Those people. The cabal. <laughs> <laughs> the generation cabal. They fucking figure all this shit out. The they light candles and they pour sand and they drop bones. And then it's like, okay, this is a new generation now. But the lizard people. Yeah, yeah. the lizard folk. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, me playing devil's advocate a little bit. I think Gen, Gen Xers do understand the struggle, but at the same time, I feel like they come from a very privileged point in history. And them being able to, still having the housing market be reasonable, still, uh, when they were coming of age, still having college be very affordable and reasonable, um, whereas we don't really have those kind of opportunities. No, no, no. I think that Gen Xers come from an era when, the, in the early 90s, man, if, we, if you were going to college in the early 90s, your college was fucking affordable. Okay. And you're not still paying off debt. Col so college wasn't affordable. It was, I mean, uh, inflation has gone off the rocket at, out, out just off the just it's charts. more than just our money is worth different than it was in the 90s dude i know but it, it's not that it was affordable it was easier to get that loan and get a job that paid appropriately to pay off those loans and subsequently though you weren't butt fucked with those loans either like those loans weren't this crazy compound interest bullshit it, yeah. where you're just paying that's, you don't pay off like, any of the principal like, effectively it's, that's what made the college is more affordable. That to me is, is affordability. Is, yeah, is the loan aspect of it. Um, whereas, like, the colleges are still sure they were still expensive. Essentially, but there was a level of affordability and accessibility that we don't still have. Correct. So that's that's my I, opinion on I, that. I, yeah, uh, I I feel that. Um, they also, I mean, yeah, they also had to go to college. Oh, they wouldn't be able to do fuck all if they didn't go to college. They had to absolutely yeah. like it was a part they, they they if they didn't go to college and have a college degree, they couldn't get a job in any anywhere. The, yeah. It it would that's where the whole like you'll be flipping burgers came from. Yeah. Um cuz it's like you can't get a job that's going to get you anywhere. If you don't have a degree, you'll just be stuck in fast food flipping burgers mm. and it's like oh that's the worst because that's a minimum wage job which you could still live off of but you're not going to be able to live comfortably off of again the housing market was a little less tight than it was then like i i mean i was even saying this place no. got grandfathered in for the current rent that i'm paying i paid when i first moved in here which was less than a decade ago it was almost 400 dollars cheaper than it is right now exactly and that was just a decade ago. Go back another decade. How much was rent? Three hundred bucks? Not quite, but yeah. What was what the fuck was minimum wage? Uh, Eight dollars. <laughs> a little less than that, but also still, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like, it was it was still affordable to live because everything has gone up and all of that, and the wages haven't gone up enough to meet that, mm. which. It shouldn't necessarily be that the wages go up. All this other shit shouldn't be going up. Yeah. Inflation is asinine. It's all made up bullshit. <laughs> this I mean, is my hardest thing about this. I know, I know, like, it sounds whimsical to say it's all made up bullshit, but it really, like, we're giving things a value. We've created this value. Making it worth more and being like, it's now worth more as time progresses or whatever, like, there's a lot it's just it's dumb and if you want it to be like well yeah this is this is now worth this much because things just cost more now then i have to be able to afford to live yeah so we would have to get into some crazy macroeconomic stuff that's like way beyond us because we're not we're not sitting here talking like we're fucking experts about this we okay are I've, just talking about our opinions I, I point of fact i point of fact i've seen some episodes of shit that were released where people kind of criticize that i'm like we're not claiming to be experts on jack shit absolutely we're just not. fucking voicing an opinion this right now. our opinions our yeah. thoughts on it you can think our opinions fucking stupid 
fine. It's disagree. our opinion. Let us Give know us why a, you disagree. Disagree. Give us the, your correct counter us. to that. Tell us what we're yeah. missing. If, Info- do like, you have an economics degree? Fucking let us know. <laughs> I like to learn things. Yeah. The first step to being able to learn is to be accepting of the fact that you don't know. Yeah. I know when I don't know something doesn't mean I don't have an opinion about it or a feeling about it because that's based off of what I do know about a thing. Yeah. Correct me. Teach me. I love to learn. Yeah. We're two college dropouts who just sit across from each other and drink beer. I, like, <laughs> hey, you dropped out, buddy. I stopped going. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. I know. I was talking. Hold on, to... let me get you a hair so you can split it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just. I... <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day about how my buddy likes to say, you know, uh, oh, yeah, I, I mean, I was an English major. Yeah. And you let that linger. And then you'll be like, I dropped out. Yeah. I'm like, I left art school. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> we both had bullshit majors, too. Oh. It's because, I mean, at that time, they were still preaching all hands on for college, too, when we were graduating high school. Because you, you graduate 05 or something like that. 03 i graduated in 08 and yeah it was they were still preaching this idea of like you got to go to college you You got to do something you must yeah and i was just like i don't fucking know i'm like so i was just like liberal arts english something like that something i'm fucking good at or interested in cool i can do that and then after a year of that i was like i don't fucking like college (laughs) it's stupid so it circles back around to like how we we fucked up we fucked up the market by not just falling in line and doing this shit. It's all our fault. Millennials, when I say we. Actually, no. Michael and I yeah, fucked us, everything. Us personally. <laughs> put the onus entirely on us. We, <laughs> we, will, we will shoulder that burden for no you guys. Pro- Honestly, I will. Fuck it. I, I'll take it. I don't give a shit. Blame me for all of the issues that we have in the world right Boomers, now. Boomers, sound off in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> and if... Don't say millennials. Don't say Gen Z. Say us. Us, us personally. Our names. Me, right here. <laughs> and if you're willing to do that, then maybe you're willing to listen to some of the ideas I have to fix it. <laughs> so, but let's first get everyone on board of, for blaming. Yeah. yeah. And then then I can repent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, sorry. You you were saying we got we got on a tangent there. Well, yeah. it's it's we would need a macroeconomics degree yeah. to fully understand um, why inflation is inherently healthy. Because I've heard that before that the right percentage of inflation is good. It, it means that you have a healthy economy that is growing. Our inflation is snowballed into a, a state where it does not. It, it's no longer again, healthy or snowballed. conducive. It is snowballed yeah. and the, as opposed to. Just gradual growth, growth. Yeah. yeah as opposed to rolling a snowball on flat level land to accumulate more snow in order to make the base for your snowman oh, it's just wildly going downhill <laughs> it's just going downhill out of control damn near avalanche status like some of the some aspects of day-to-day life are worse now than they were in the great depression i know just based purely off of just percentages which, of shit <laughs> which is crazy because of the great depression during that time like People uh, still around for it look around and go, whatever, this is fine. Except it's not. No. (laughs) Like there are certain, like you said, aspects of it that are not. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I have a roof over my head. Our quality of life is way fucking better than the Great Depression overall. Our quality of life has gone up in general. Yeah. And that's why it's like, it feels better, I guess. Mm. Humans always it doesn't make it better. Humans always approach things with this level of like um, ennui and malaise, though. That's just kind of just generally eh. Like, <laughs> like, eh. like uh, we always think things are going to be better in the future or things were better in the past. But in reality, everyone was just kind of like eh. Kind of just living. Eh. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah most of your day to day life is just you going through the motions of day to day bullshit, which is makes which is which, which sounds awful and scary and sad. But in reality, that makes the fun things that stand out that much more. Yeah. It just, makes it makes the good better. Bro, this has been a lot If you were of just fun. like fucking ah, the whole time, then like nothing would be special I mean, to you. I don't want to do that the whole time, but uh this has been a lot of fun. I'm just gonna like fucking uh throw all my shit away and start walking. Yeah, just start <laughs> just forest gumping it, dude. <laughs> the scene where the fucking winds carry you. I didn't want to say forest gumping it because I'm not running. <laughs> I swear that is not happening. I mean, I might run sometimes. I'm going to go home now. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, but 
I, the, the job market itself isn't uh, terrible. It just feels terrible because people need workers. Workers don't necessarily want to work for a wage that's not giving them enough. Yeah. Unfortunately, you got to start somewhere. Also, Gen Xers, if they didn't go to college and started out flipping burgers, they're a lot of them, if they just stuck with the job, are doing fine because you move up in that. Yeah. And a lot of those companies, uh, those chain restaurant companies, uh, will pay for you. If you're there long enough, will pay for you to go through schooling to get a business degree. As if you're willing to still work with them to get you into management position to help you move up in their company. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not like pro-corporations by any stretch of the imagination. Sure. I think they're fucking up hand over a fist. A lot of them are. A lot yes. of them are. Um, ex I mean, especially this whole, like, CEOs do not need to make as much money as they make. That's Pe a, people that's, on the board that's of... A greed, that's a greed the thing. The greed thing. People on the board <laughs> of directors don't need to make mu as much money as they make. That's they a don't, greed thing. They also should focus more on making their company grow in a fashion that, to me, seems reasonable. They're looking for infinite growth in a finite system. Yeah, which and we've talked about before. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, it, like that, that meme that's been going around, like, uh, our company standards, our number goes up, and our other standards standard is a uh, number that goes up goes up faster <laughs> like <laughs> like what do you fucking like that's literally what companies shoot for and it's ridiculous like i can't you just fucking be happy making the amount of money that you're currently making you don't I need mean, this constant growth or this pushing out competition yes. like it's it's way too it's insane it's in, it's insane and it's evil if you look at from a philosophical perspective not to get too drop too much fucking shit like that on this conversation right now sure. but from a philosophical perspective corporations are evil yes <laughs> there is no good to be had from them which is which is like i mean if you want also if you want to see those things happen there are companies that are corporations that are still around that have been around for a really long time because they have learned and they're like if we give to our workers we mm -hmm. will see that go up yeah if our workers are happy our company will thrive yeah I see so many people shit on Henry Ford, and there's a lot of reasons to shit on Henry Ford. Oh, sure, sure, sure. A lot of a lot of his uh, personal opinions about um, uh, certain ethnic groups of people, for example, are. I know nothing about that. Well, they're deplorable, but um, oh, wow. as, but uh, so many people will say things about um, him inventing the five day work week, and then shit on him about that. I'm like, you guys do realize it was more than five days before him, right? Yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> like, like he didn't he didn't increase the number, he decreased the yeah, number. Yeah, he, he he brought it down to uh something where it, it gave you time to yeah. to have off and he made sure all of his workers were paid a wage where they could fucking afford the thing that they were building he wanted yes. every single one of his workers to be able to afford a model t yep like i don't know i think the dude There's like that, that's a good example of a company that's run properly because you look at your workers and your employees first and if they succeed the rest of your company like, exceeds look at fucking dan price for example Dan Price is not a perfect guy, but in his company, he was noticing that a lot of there was a lot of drop off in efficiency for a lot of his employees. It's because they had to pick up second jobs because they weren't getting paid enough for office work, for college level office work. Yeah. And he was just like, well, this is insane. He's like, so he took an enormous pay cut as CEO in order to make sure every single one of his employees made a living Being wage. wage. They're making seventy five thousand dollars a year working for this guy. Like, there you go. He's like, I don't need to make that much money yeah. if my employee. And he down he had to downsize a bit, but he's still living comfortably in, com in the process. More than comfortably. Yeah. Like that's you, you got to be willing to you you got to be willing to understand. You just need to get by, and if you want to get by a little bit better, and you've created something that wants to. Um, thrive and do well you need people to help you with that they can't help you if they can't live 100 percent. yeah all there is to it yeah if they're if they're worried about shit at home if bills are stressing them we've out got this they mind, can't do it we've got this mindset so hard in our society of what's like doesn't matter we have we have to work we have to do the job it, it might not do what we need it to we have to do it only person that can change that is you by going, well, I could find something different. Can you? Because enough people think 
I, I, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. And therefore, someone's going to do it. So maybe you won't be able to find something different. Yeah. Everyone can make a change in their own life somehow, some way. Doesn't mean it will be successful, but... Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I feel the same way. I think that anybody can take a step in any direction they want to. And yeah. there's there's accountability for your own actions and Always. your own your own spending and your own other factors that come into play. But just saying that as the reason why things aren't looking great for our generation and future generations is to me trying to fucking pull the wool over our eyes. Exactly. It's like, no, it's not, it's, all... it's not just that. Yes. There needs to be personal accountability a hundred percent, Yeah. but there also needs to be personal accountability on, on the top tier of things. This. Fuck you, Elon Musk. Fuck you. Fucking Mark Zuckerberg. Fuck, Fuck you. you. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Bezos. You don't need to have all that fucking money. All right. You can pay your employees better and you can make your companies run more efficiently because of it. They... Yes. Just in and the, still be fucking immensely rich. I was going to say, just in fuckers. their companies alone, they can not, do that. This isn't some bread tube communism thing I'm going on either right now. No, okay, no, no. I'm not fucking saying that. I'm like, saying that, like, dude. They could pay just their companies better. Like, they don't need to spread their wealth around where they're, like, giving to other people outside. In your company, you could pay all of them a, just a living wage, 100% across yeah. the board, all the way down to the lowest tier, a living wage. And they'd still be ridiculously rich, so they're not going to be losing their wealth. Nope. And their employees will be happy because they're not as stressed. And that creates more growth for your company, which creates more, more fucking wealth. wealth for you, you dumbasses. I don't understand why this is so fucking hard. But it's when you run... It's I guess it's because they fucking try and monopolize everything, too. Uh, like, yeah. you know, take over all of this. Where else are you going to go, motherfuckers? Like, I want that. Now I want that. Now I want that. Okay. Yeah. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. I mean, I literally just said on the last episode, like, oh, yeah, just go pick up one of these on Amazon. I'm not saying it isn't a fucking very convenient service. I'm just saying that it also treats your employees like shit, and their fucking CEO makes way too much goddamn money, or former CEO. I don't even know if he, if Bezos still even runs Amazon anymore, if he's just, like, founder or, now. Yeah, or, yeah, if he just is making residuals off of it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a song he wrote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking effectively. <laughs> shit. But anyway, yeah, we got a fucking wild tangent I, there, but that's, that's but that's bound fine. to happen. Like yeah. we we started this with talking, economy is this episode <laughs> exactly? We started with talking about the job market. That's going to lead to economy, which yeah. is going to lead to us being who we are, um, and and talking about um, how we feel and see things and think things are with our society and the economics of it. Other people might see it differently. Yeah. Maybe if I had a uh, hundred G's fucking in my bank account, I I would be like, <laughs> the economy's fine. Yeah, I don't think I would. I really don't. I just personally think we should stop eating all that avocado toast. That's what's really fucking up the economy. That's why none of us have any money. Just keep eating that avocado toast. I haven't been eating avocado toast. <laughs> I've never ordered avocado toast in my entire fucking life. Yeah, I've man. never even had it. I don't think I put avocados on bread I put before. Avocado on a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> is that avocado toast? I guess it's it, been a toasted sandwich. To I toasted the bread. Does that count? <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Avocado toast is funny. Avocado costs more. I, I saw this very, to kind of round us out, I saw this very hilarious um, post that uh, <laughs> it said um, it was an L.A. restaurant, and it had the, all these prices, which are reasonable prices, actually, but for avocado toast, it said market price. <laughs> that is, first of all, I hope. And I'm like, oh, my God, what the fuck? <laughs> I hope that that is just them being cheeky and hilarious, because I think that's funny funny as fuck the rest of the prices seemed pretty re for la prices they seem pretty reasonable right, right. talking about 14 15 dollars for like small plates yeah like i didn't look i didn't see what the entrees looked like or anything sure. like that but but uh i for i la that's not bad i think i i, I just hope there because i think that is a that that would that's hilarious if they're being cheeky mm -hmm. if they're like market price and like depends on how much i got these avocados for yeah Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying $37. <laughs> They're acting like avocado toast is like Chilean sea bass. <laughs> and I'm like, this is fucking stupid, man. <laughs> oh, that's I, that's really funny. I'm just going to I'm going to hope for the best in this and think uh, they put that there because they're like yeah market price and you get it. It's the cheapest thing on the menu. Yeah, maybe they're one one of those kind of restaurants, right? 
Well, buddy, um, good luck in your job search. I know you said there's some data entry positions you applied for and stuff like that. Looked at some like, things today. Uh, you know, yeah. I I appreciate the the good luck. I'm yeah. I'm not sweating anything. In the meantime, you guys can help us out. Our friends over at Wild Man Drinking Company have uh, you know given us a like kind of a sponsorship deal and uh, an affiliate link. And you know you can check out that link below. Purchase yourself a Kraken so you can chug some beers. We gotta do a podcast where we actually use the Kraken. At we one will. Point. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. But uh, you can use it. It's Show a it it's off. a shotgunning tool. We have a couple of them already because we thought they were a cool product and we picked them up ourselves. We like them. We use them every time we shotgun a beer. Ten percent off your first purchase, and it th- gives us a little kickback too. So it I, I helps us out. I will never shotgun another beer uh, the same way. Like, if I think I might shotgun a beer, I'm like, yeah, no, that's I'm, I, I have that with me. Not gonna lie, it just makes the whole process easier. A hundred percent easier. Yeah. Less messy, less blood. Like yeah. it's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <Good shit. laughs> well, don't get me wrong. Don't punch in a can's cool, right, guys? You know, um, fucking. Like, things. comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things. Ringling you know that, that dingling. Uh, also, fucking correct us, the comments. Tell us what we don't know. Tell us what we're missing. Let us hear your opinions, even, if you don't have the knowledge in it. Yeah. Just what are your thoughts on this? We're curious. Love to learn. Love to hear what others have to say. Yeah. So, True. Truly. That's, uh, you know, interact with us. Yeah. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.